Hello everyone and welcome to this Lightarama tutorial. In this video, we'll go through the basic steps to set up a Pixie link and cover how to configure your props to match in the preview editor. A Pixie link can replace six of your USB 485 high-speed adapters and communicate with Pixie controllers up to 17 times more quickly. If you're rapidly expanding in pixel quantity and love using memory intensive motion effects, the Pixie link is a great choice for your display. We'll start with covering the IP address settings for the easiest connection method, connecting the Pixie Link's Ethernet port directly to the Ethernet port on your computer. While there are other advanced connection options, they will not be covered in this tutorial. Windows 10 and Windows 11 may vary slightly in how they look, but the concept is the same in both. You'll first need to tell your computer through Windows what IP address it has so it can communicate to your Pixie Link, which has a default IP address out of the box of 192. .168.1.206. Your computer needs to match for the first three numbers, so the setting could be 192.168.1.200, shown on the left. Each Pixie Link or Ethernet-based device needs a unique IP address in the same family of addresses as your computer. Additionally, matching the fixed IP mask on the Pixie Link to your Windows subnet mask is an important part of setup. Forgetting to configure these two window settings are where most problems with a Pixie Link occur. The next step is to visit the web page configuration for the Pixie Link, which you can access by typing the IP address of the device in the search bar of a web browser. Each port on a Pixie Link can be set to a different protocol, such as Pixie Link, ELOR, or Serial DMX. The most common is Pixie Link 17 due to the significantly higher speed and can only be used if there are only Pixie controllers on the network. If you have longer Cat5 cable runs, you may need to drop to a lower Pixie link speed to compensate. ELOR settings would be used if you have other non-Pixie Gen 3 controllers in the daisy chain that can't be physically moved to another network since they can't be used with Pixie link protocol. Serial DMX would be used to connect DMX devices like moving heads or fog machines, or if you have a Gen 1 AC controller that can't be on an ELOR network. After choosing your protocol, you can fill out the rest of the settings. Depending on your window size, you might only see the first three ports on the top of the page, and will need to scroll down to find ports 4 through 6. The first box in each column allows you to put a maximum number of pixels you'll connect per Pixie port on that network if it won't be the full 170. Entering a value in this box is optional. The maximum number of different Pixie IDs per Pixie Link port is 32, so 2 Pixie 16s, 8 Pixie 4s, or any other combination of Pixie ports that equals 32 or less. The left side of the column should look familiar. They're the hexadecimal Lightarama unit IDs. The column on the right is where you enter the corresponding DMX universes for the props configured in your preview. These 32 boxes per column allow the Pixie Link to act like a traffic cop and translate DMX Universe prop information from your preview to match the LOR unit ID dip switches on your physical Pixies. Only the IDs 0, 1 through 20 in hexadecimal will register per network, so you might use the same dip switch settings on up to six Pixie controllers in your display if you use all six Pixie Link ports, even though all of your props in the preview will have unique DMX Universe addresses. This page is the cipher that tells the Pixie Link which of the six possible Pixies starting at unit ID 01 you're trying to communicate with since they'll all have different DMX universes in your preview. An important note before we continue, don't get DMX universe preview settings confused with the protocol dropdown for serial DMX. Although they both have DMX in the name, they're different concepts, and we only want to focus on DMX universes as addresses when we set up a port using Pixie Link 17. Back to the columns. If you don't have any props set to DMX in your preview yet, you would likely start at DMX Universe 1. You can quickly autofill the next numbers by using ASDF on your keyboard. Each plug or port on a physical Pixie is its own unit ID, so they'll each need their own DMX Universe in the preview. In this example, we're planning to add two 16-strand megatrees, each using a Pixie 16 controller. You'll access the preview editor through the sequencer. We'll set up our two example props with easy labels to help us remember how they're configured. The first megatree will be set to RGB, have 16 strands of 100 pixels, start on DMX Universe 1, and autofill through DMX Universe 16. The name of the prop is reminding us that we need to set the dip switches to start at LOR ID 1 since that's what we told the Pixie Link to look for in the web page. The second megatree will start on DMX Universe 17 and fill to DMX Universe 32, 
with the custom prop name reminding us to set the dip switches to start at LOR unit ID 11. Be sure to continuously reference your PixieLink webpage configuration as you make your preview, so that your PixieLink can correctly translate your prop settings to your physical Pixie ports during show playback, 17 times faster than a USB adapter. The last puzzle piece for basic setup with a Pixie Link is to add the device into the Networks tab of the Lightarama control panel. Click Add and then choose an E131 SACN controller. Here you can set the range of universes used by your Pixie Link in total, which in this case is 1 through 32. You can name your port to anything you like, but be sure to choose the same IP address as the Pixie Link, which in our case is 192.168.1.206. If you split or skip universes throughout your ports and have controllers connected through other methods, you will need to add more than one Pixie Link as a device. If you want to do any testing through the control panel outside of using a sequence, you can use the Test Lights tab of the control panel and view the status page of the Pixie Link configuration. And that's all for this tutorial. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you never miss a notification about new videos.